we welcome now Haley Fasakerly, President and CEO of Intergy. Haley, how's it going today, sir? Well, I've had better days, but we're doing well, uh, Gerard. Appreciate the chance to come on and uh, brief our customers about what's happening with our storm restoration efforts. You bet. So um, just anecdotally, I've, I've spoken to a number of people that uh, in, endured uh, really the wrath of uh, really strong winds, knocking down poles and trees, of course, that knocked down lines. I've seen the, uh, the energy trucks uh, dotting the landscape around central Mississippi. Where is uh, the situation the worst, and what can you tell us about when folks might expect their power to be restored? Yeah, sure, Right. First, I want to make sure safety is front and center with everybody. You know, there's a lot of standing water, power lines, and electricity do not, uh, water and electricity do not mix well, so please be uh, mindful of that. And also these uh, power lines are mixed up in vegetation, and so yeah. I know people are anxious to clean up yards and stuff, so be careful, stay away from that. Always assume that those wire, wire, excuse me, wires are hot. Yeah. Uh, you're right, uh, winds continue to persist today. We're going to see 30 and 40 mile per hour winds, but we're making progress. We peaked around 33,000, almost 34,000 customers, but we saw continued outages throughout the day yesterday, some this morning due to winds. We've restored 38,725 customers and have about 20,000 remaining. Over half of those are in Hines, Madison, and Warren counties. Uh, and then we're scattered from Grenada down to uh, south to Natchez and all the areas around our service territory. We have a large contingency of workers, both line workers. We've had to bring in additional vegetation crews. As you are aware, Gerard, uh, we're not only dealing with bad weather, but because of the drought last summer, we've got record number of dead trees. Yeah. And that's uh, adding to the complexity. Uh, uh, but we are working hard to get uh, customers re restored. We expect to have most people restored by today, uh, okay. tonight. Uh, that could go, uh, there will be areas in rural areas or hard to reach areas that will cut, probably could go on into uh, late tomorrow. Okay. So, um, Haley, what's the best way that uh, your customers can stay abreast of the progress and the status and just learn about when they can expect their power to be restored? Well, uh, I encourage people to visit uh, the My Entergy app uh, and our view outage map. That will keep people in, in, uh, informed there. Uh, I will inform people when they're looking at that map that will show street view. If it doesn't give you an a estimated restoration time, that's because we haven't completed assessments. We're about 87% complete, but as those assessments are done, we'll be able to put a, an estimated re restoration time. The first time that you will see up there, it will show where we re when we recorded you being out. Okay. But that is a great tool to look at. It's um, we uh, and you can access that both on a uh, online, but also our app is the best way to use that by downloading that app onto your cell phone. Yeah, it's it's good. It's uh, good advice, and and I can personally attest to. Uh, the value of the the tool in the in the fortunately rare times I, I need to use it, it's uh, very easy to navigate. It's very informative, and so I agree and I encourage that. And and just to make sure, Haley, is there anything that that uh, customers cannot find out about on the tool or on the website which has the same information that may necessitate a call to your customer service? Well, one thing we commonly hear is, like, I'm out and I don't see any crews in my area. Okay. Uh, when we restore area, of course, we have to get hospitals and first responders back on first. But your area could be out because of a feeder circuit that could be miles away is out. Okay. And we're, and we're restoring that. So that's another area. Another com uh, complaint we get is, well, they're just sitting in their trucks. Well, they're either waiting on vegetation crews, waiting on safety switching to occur to make sure breakers are open and it's safe to get into lines, or they could be going for what we call safety tailboard. So yeah. there's a very methodical process that we follow there. <laughs> uh, damage has been significant. We have 133 broken poles so far, 515 wow. spans of, of downed wire, 27 transformers, and over 60 broken cross, cross arms. So... Uh, and that, those damage assessments continue. Yeah, and, and you also, Haley, referenced uh, the fact that the drought really took its toll 
on the trees, in particular the, the many pine trees that um, are, are across our landscape. I, I just wonder, if is this posing a continued risk because as, as they weaken and, and winds that maybe if they were a, a healthy and, and deeply rooted tree would, would not blow them down uh, just based on the weakness now, the way the drought took its toll, and, of course, the beetles infesting them. Right. That, that they're more vulnerable to falling, which causes problems for the power. Well, that's our problem today. We have 30 to 45, 40 mile per hour wind gusts that are continue to create that. That also makes it hard for us to put buckets in the air. Yeah. But uh, our vegetation uh, talks to the uh, Mississippi Forestry Commission. You've seen the reports about the record uh, number of trees, 12.5 million. But uh, the thing that was disturbing to us is that this problem will persist for a couple of years. Hmm. We are, we are really targeting our circuits. We've upped the vegetation work since we uh, are aware of this problem and, and continue to work hard on uh, improving uh, access. But most of these trees are outside of the right-of-ways that we have. Yeah. So if you have a 30-foot right-of-way, 40-foot right-of-way, and a 80-foot tree falls, well, that, uh, hmm. you know, you can see it. But So that is a problem, one we're going to be dealing with uh, for the next couple of years. But we are targeting resources to try to address that. Okay. So, unfortunately, the, the weather last year is compounding us in the future. It, doesn't just, yep. it didn't just move through the, in the case of this drought. That's causing uh, possible further risk to this. While we got you, um, our, our big project in Madison County with Amazon Web Services, uh, you know, I've, I've bragged a lot about you guys because I believe it, that uh, energy was certainly a, a critical element in landing this historical investment. Anything you can tell us about the progress on provisioning uh, both generation and transmission that's needed to service these hyperscale data centers? Yeah, so our work, uh, we're underway building the very first substation up at the Madison Megaplex that will serve that first uh, phase. Uh, we're, get, we're starting to get equipment in for the transmission upgrades going forward. Uh, we are moving forward uh, with uh, plans around the generation. I hope to be announcing a groundbreaking very soon in the Delta around one of the power plants that will be uh, built to serve all our customers with a very modern, efficient generation technology. Uh, we will be also announcing the sites for some solar facilities that will be coming in, all, the, all that coming to play, and, uh, uh, and further upgrades we're making to our generation and transmission systems to serve that. The other thing, you know, relevant to what we're talking about today, uh, Gerard, is one of the things what's so great about the project is how beneficial it is to uh, the whole community, of course the tax base, but this is going to bring revenue in the business that's going to allow us to invest in our business uh, to make it more reliable and to serve our customers better. We have not had the type of transformational growth that allowed us. And as you know, things cost more today, yeah. uh, supply chain challenges. So the revenue that Amazon is going to bring in is to allow us to make further investments to improve reliability across our grid to all our customers. So it's going to be transformational in all ways uh, and beneficial to our customers. Yeah, it's a great point. We, we don't talk as much uh, about the, the uh, outgrowth and uh, the potential for that and really just the reality of that because that is what's happened everywhere these sorts of projects have, have been completed because we're so focused on just the size and scale and scope of this and we know we're uh, a couple of years or so away from, you know, the, the full fruition. But I agree, it's going to be transformational. And something else, Haley, can, can you just uh, share with us? The economic impact just of the work that Entergy's doing in constructing these facilities. I mean, you're spending a lot of money, right, on people oh, yeah. and contractors uh, and vendors to, to make this thing happen. Yeah, you know, Governor was excited about, you know, he's announced the two greatest impact uh, economic development projects in the state. I was kidding with him. I said, Governor, when you approved AWS, you actually also approved the second one because the Entergy is going to have to invest <laughs> $3 billion in new investments uh, uh, to not only serve this customer, but it allows us to pull some investments forward that benefit all of our customers. And it will impact six other counties. Yeah. Uh, so those counties will benefit from those uh, capital investments we're making and the tax revenues it generates for them and the jobs. Haley, we got about 30 seconds, but could you just address this concern? I know you've heard it. We've heard it here that that uh, this project is going to 
going to exceed the capacity of energy and, and we're going to be in the dark and all that sort of hyperbole before we go? That's the last thing we're going to allow to happen. We take this seriously, and we're planning to do it right. As you know, they would love to go bigger, but we have to do it in a way that's yeah. responsible and it benefits all of our stakeholders, customers, communities, and stuff. So we're going to do this in a very responsible way that deploys the resources that serves all of our customers and uh, not do anything that puts anything at risk. Haley, appreciate you coming on and giving us an update uh, on two important matters in the state of Mississippi, and we'll be talking soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gerard. Take care. We're coming right back in the Element Well Studio. 